Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel and welcome from my new place and my new workshop. I'm super excited to be finally settled in here so I can start working. I got this beautiful oak credenza from Facebook Marketplace and it was completely free. But because I felt bad for that lady, I actually did give her £20. As you can see, pretty much everything was broken, including the hinges, some pieces of wood, the top was detached and there were some pieces of plywood on the back missing and some pieces of wood as well. But somehow I could see potential in this piece, so I decided to fix it. To start with this project, I used my cordless pressure washer from Hotel and some sugar soap to give this old piece a really good clean. After I sprayed it with sugar soap, I rinsed it and I let it sit outside so it would dry. Because it was an oak piece and the weather was really nice that day, I didn't worry about cleaning it with water because I knew that it would dry really quickly. By the way, all the Hotel tools that you will see in this video you can buy directly from Hotel's website and I actually have a discount code that you can find in the description. As it is the case with most vintage pieces, there was some paper stuck to it and lots of dirt, so a lot of elbow grease needed, but I got there in the end. If you are my regular viewer, hello again, and if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more content like this. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who support me through buying me a coffee or my Amazon wishlist and I really do appreciate it. As I was talking you could see me use my card scraper to remove the first layer of varnish and then I went over it with my new sander which is amazing by the way. This is my first 5mm stroke sander and I'm totally in love with this because it just works so much quicker than my old one. Remove the top and I remove the nails from the top and I prepare the surface for re-gluing. Since the top was off, I took advantage of that and I cleaned up the inside. I also removed the hardware and I put it aside for later. Most of the hinges were broken, so I knew I would have to replace them. of the pieces used to glue the top to the carcass were loose so I cleaned it up and I re-glued them. Also glued the doors because all the joints were loose. In case you guys are wondering why I'm not applying glue everywhere, and that's because the panel in the middle it's what what is called a floating panel, and it's meant to be loose to prevent cracking during seasonal movement of the wood. So I clamped it all together. The glue squeeze out was a decent amount, and I was happy with that. Next I use my card scraper on the rest of the buffet and I'm actually very happy with this scraper because it's super easy to sharpen 
and it's actually much more effective than my previous one that I've used until now. Doing the beveled edges was a bit tricky, so I used a wire brush and I went with the grain to get rid of most of the varnish. Because of the way oak grain looks, I felt comfortable using wire brush on it. I probably wouldn't use it on any other species of wood. And I also went over the whole thing by hand with some sandpaper just to make sure there was no scratches. After a well-deserved coffee break, I fixed some cracks on the bottom of the buffet. As it is the case with most of my projects, there was a lot of sanding, but the new sander that I got made it so much easier. I also use my multi-tool from Parkside to remove pieces of plywood, as you can actually see what I'm doing, because some of them were chipped or broken, so I just get rid of them altogether just to make it look tidy. And then I fixed another crack in the bottom using my brushless Hoto drill and my Hoto screwdriver. I am not sponsored by Hoto, but I did receive those tools for free and I really, really like them. So the back stretcher was completely missing, but fortunately I had a piece of oak from a vintage buffet that I worked on a long time ago, so I decided to repurpose it. So this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm basically trying to match the front stretcher and make this one in a similar fashion as the other one. So the stretchers on this piece were attached using tenons and mortises, so I basically recreated the tenon to match the mortise that was already in the back leg. And I used my bandsaw to make the cut. I also applied some glue to strengthen the front stretcher and I used an old school method of clamping all the legs together because my clamps were not long enough. I also added some screws just to make sure that the joint would be strong. Because the salvaged piece of oak had some holes in it, I used some wood filler to fix them. One of the back legs was actually missing a piece of wood, so I replaced it with a new piece. And I use the same piece of oak that I use for the stretcher to replace this piece.
I cut it to the rough dimensions, cleaned it up with my sander and I glued it in place. It didn't need to be perfect because I knew that I would sand it once it was dry. I also used some glue and some sawdust for a seamless joint. This might seem like an overkill to some people, but I always sand my pieces inside, I sand the back, the legs, pretty much everywhere. As you might recall, there were some large screw holes in the piece of wood that I used to replace the back stretcher, so I filled them with an oak dowel. Some of you have been asking about my samurai warrior, and yes, he's here with me. Unfortunately, the hardware was just cheap metal that was plated, it wasn't brass, so I knew I would paint it. This is the quickest method to fix small or narrow cracks in the wood by using some wood glue and just going over it with sander. As I was sanding the doors I noticed another piece of wood missing so I repaired it. If I wanted to paint this piece of furniture I could have easily used some wood filler but this is the proper way to do it. I think I'm also gonna keep this piece, so I'm basically making this for myself. After gluing it and sanding, you can hardly tell there was a repair. Now it's time for the top piece. To make the sanding easier for myself, I removed the trim and I attached it back later on. The top piece needed several small repairs. The large gap that you can see right here, I clamped it together to see whether those two pieces of wood would touch and if I could just use glue because otherwise I would have to insert a slim piece of wood to close the gap and glue it all together. It turned out I did need to cut a thin piece of wood to close the gap. The top piece was attached to the main body of the credenza with two dowels, but one of them was missing, so I cut the other one. I could have cut it a bit longer, but it worked just fine. I used a small chisel to remove varnish from those difficult to reach places.
As you can see, I sanded the bottom of the inside, but for the sides, I decided to use Restore a Finish. Before I attach the top, I did a lot of touching up and hand sanding and chisel work just to make sure the whole piece was nice and clean, including all the tight spaces and edges and corners. Attaching the top wasn't very straightforward as it was a little bowed but with lots of glue and clamps it worked just fine. As my channel is approaching 40,000 subscribers, which is completely insane and I never thought I would get to this point, I just wanted to say a quick thank you and this is all because of you guys, because you watch my content you like, comment, you subscribe, you share my videos, so thank you so much. And finally I attached the new hinges and hardware using my super cool Hotel screwdriver that I just got in the mail as I was making this video. If you are guys interested in Hotel tools, check the website that's in the description and there is also a discount code for you if you would like to purchase one. When I was done with the hinges, I used a brass wire brush to clean up the hardware and I soaked it in acetone to remove any residue of paint or grease or whatever was on it. I find that two different shades of gold give me the best or the closest match to brass color. And finally, it's time for waxing. I use my favorite beeswax from Howard's and I waxed pretty much everything. As I mentioned before, I'm making this for myself, so I'm perfectly happy with just the wax and I will not be using any other type of top coat. I will be reapplying this wax now and then and I know that I'll be gentle with this piece, so this is more than enough. working on my next project and it's gonna be pretty interesting and different so keep an eye for my next video many of you guys seem to appreciate the fact that I care for the entire piece not just the front so I purposely kept this footage so you can see the whole process of waxing the inside the drawers the back the bottom the legs and everything else And as I said before, the trim that I removed when I was sanding the top piece, I'm putting back after some sanding. And to do that, I use some very tiny brass nails.
After attaching the hardware, I used the same paint that I painted it with for touching up and also painting the screws that I used to replace the missing nails. And as the final step, I decided to use some black wax to create some visual interest and those pieces that I haven't sanded, I covered them with black wax. I also used a very small amount of black wax on the hardware, basically dry brushed it to make it look not brand new, as in my opinion it just didn't go with the whole piece. And this is all for this video, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe and see you in the next video.